is lesson 5.6, page 268, graphing linear inequalities in two variables. In this lesson, you will learn how to check solutions of linear inequalities, how to graph linear inequalities in two variables, and how to use linear inequalities to solve a real life problem. So first of all, what is a linear inequality? A linear inequality in two variables can be written as any of these forms. Now, the way I remember this, it's easy. This is just telling you that these are standard form except they have inequality symbols. Like if you look at every one of these statements, they all look like they're in standard form except where I'm underlining right now you know, here, here, they don't have equal signs, they have an inequality symbol. So that's what a linear inequality in two variables looks like. Standard form, except it has an inequality symbol. Now, the solution of a linear inequality is an ordered pair that makes the inequality true. Okay? So that's easy to check if an ordered pair is a solution to an inequality. Because all you have to do is just plug in that ordered pair and check. So, for example, in part A, the sample, if I take negative 1 and plug it in for x and 9 and plug it in for y, I'm just trying to see, is this true? Well, let's try it. If I put a negative 1 in for x and I put a 9 in for y, I'm getting positive 7 on the left negative 3 on the right is positive 7 less than negative 3. And you can see there they're saying, no, that's not true. So this is not a solution of that inequality. If you go to B, sample B, okay, if you take 2 and plug it in for x and you take negative 2 and plug it in for y, you get this statement. This would be 2 negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. This turns into 2 plus 6, which is 8. And is 8 greater than or equal to 8? Remember, the keywords or is one of those conditions being met. Yes, this is true, so this would be a solution. What I'd like you to do right now is try these four. Double check real quick and see if these ordered pairs are a solution to these inequalities. All right, we're back. So for number one, no, this is not a solution because if I put negative 2 in for x and 2 in for y, I get the statement 0 greater than 0. That's not a true statement. So no, this is not a solution. Let's go to number two. If I put 0, 0 in here, I get the statement 0 greater than equal 5. That's not true. So no, 0, 0 is not a solution in this case. If I go to 3, if I plug negative 4 in for x and negative 1 in for y, I end up with the statement negative 18 is less than or equal negative 1. That's a true statement. Negative 18 is less than negative 1. So yes, that is a solution. And for number 4, yes, 5, negative 7 is a solution as well because I get the statement 11 less than 15. That, again, is a true statement. Now, when you try solving a linear inequality with two variables, you have to graph it. And you might be thinking, oh no, why? Well, here's the reason. Linear inequalities have infinitely many solutions. If I told you, go home tonight and solve this, y less than 2x, there is infinitely many correct ordered pairs that would, give you the, that would give you the correct answer. There's no way you could write them all out, so we quickly draw a picture on paper of what those solutions are. That's why we have to graph linear inequalities to find the solution set. Now, the graph of linear inequality in two variables shows all the solutions of the inequality in a coordinate plane. So again, there's infinitely many correct answers to this. We've got to graph it. Okay. So here's what this problem that they're doing up here, the sample problem, is we're going to find the solution set of y less than 2x. Now, to do that, we have to follow the directions that you see down here. Okay. 
Here's the first thing. You want to graph a boundary line for the inequality. In other words, they're telling you, take this and pretend it's in slope-intercept form. Y equals 2x plus 0, and you want to graph this line. So let's do that. Y-intercept 0, that's here. Slope 2, that means up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. Now I'm going to take my ruler out. Here's the next part. Let me highlight this in the directions. You use a dashed line if you have an inequality, but if you have equals, you use a solid line. This problem does not have equals. That's why you see the dashed line. Okay? Now, this line is like an imaginary fence. Okay? It's an imaginary fence. It's separating the solutions from the non-solutions. So if you look in the book, you'll see in blue they've already shaded the correct responses. I'm going to show you how to figure out which side to shade now in the next couple steps. So here's the next step. Test a point not on the boundary line to determine if it's a solution. Okay, so pick something easy. Like, I'm going to pick this point. It's the point 1 for x, 0 for y. Let's plug that in. 1 for x, 0 for y. Do I get a true statement? I get 0 less than 2. That's a true statement. That means the points over here on the right are the solutions, and the points over here on the left of this boundary line are the non-solutions. You shade the solution side. That's why the book, we're taking a pen or something and we're shading. So all these ordered pairs on the bottom right are the solutions, which is what step three is telling you, okay? When the test point works, you shade that side. If it doesn't work, you shade the other side. That's how we shade these. Um, I've already talked about this, but I'm just going to underline it. Remember, a dashed boundary line means that the points are not solutions. So right now, like the point zero, 0, it's on this boundary line, but it's dashed. That means if I plug a 0 and a 0, this is not true. 0 is not less than 0. If you have a solid boundary line, that means those points are solutions also. Let's do a couple more samples, okay? Let's graph y is less than or equal to an coordinate plane. Now, you might look at that and say it only has one variable. Okay, no big deal. Let's graph it. So, first of all, first step, pretend that this is y equals 2. Well, that's a horizontal line, two units up. Let me highlight that. So, here's my horizontal line, two units up. It's right here, okay, which you see in the book. Okay, step two, I have to figure out which side to shade. So let's test the point. Zero, zero would be good to use. Now, you might be like, wait a minute, there's no place to plug in X. That's fine, don't plug it in then. You just plug in zero for Y. Is this true? Is zero less than equal to? Uh, yeah, that is true. Zero is less than two. So I should be shading this side. All these ordered pairs would make that statement true. Okay? Let's go to the second example. Let's graph this two variable inequality in the coordinate plane. So I'm going to quickly rewrite this statement in the slope intercept form. And you can see I did that right here. Okay? My slope is a half and my y intercept is 1. So let's graph that. Y intercept 1, that's here slope half, which means up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, okay? Let's draw our line. Do you notice? No equal. So we're going to use a dotted line. Let's test the point. Let's try 0, 0. Let's see if it works. So I'm going to go back to this original statement up here. Let me erase this. Let's plug 0 in here and 0 in here, and I get 0 plus 0 is 0. Is this true? Is 0 bigger than 2? Mm, that's not true. So zero, 0, is on the non-solution side of the fence, which means these are the values that I should be shading. So any of these ordered pairs up here would make this
this statement true? Can you see why we have infinitely many correct answers? Any, any ordered pairs above this boundary line would make this statement true. That's why we need to graph these. What I'd like you to do is pause the video and why don't you try number six and number seven. Graph these inequalities in a coordinate plane. Remember, there's infinitely many correct answers to each of these. That's why we're graphing them. Okay, you're back. So here is question six, x less than equal negative four. So here's the first thing. My boundary line would be the equation x, remember it'd be x equals negative four, which would be this. You notice I used a bold line because can you see equals in the problem? I got equals in there. I got to use a bold line. Okay, let's test the point. I'll, I'll pick zero, zero. Now, there's nowhere to put a zero in for y. That's okay. Plug a zero in for x. Is this true? Is zero less than negative four? And that's not true. So this point that, I'm, that I tested is on the non-solution side, which means the solutions are over here on the left. So I want to shade in the left. Any of these ordered pairs left of this boundary line would be make this true. In other words, for example, I'm going to just highlight here, the point negative 6, 2 is a solution to that. The point negative 10, negative 2 is a solution. Any of these points make this statement true. Okay, here's the other problem, number 7. Now they gave me a standard form equation, but I'm going to quickly rewrite this into slope-intercept form. So my y-intercept is negative 4, and my slope is negative 1. So y-intercept negative 4, down 1 over 1. Okay, what kind of line should I draw? I hope you're saying, Mr. Lemansky, bold because I have equal. So I'm drawing a bold line. Now I've got to figure out which side to shade. Let's test the point 0, 0. That's easy to use. Let's test that point. Now, if it makes it true, I'll shade above. If, if it's not true, I'll shade below. Well, if I put a 0 and 0 in here, here's the question. Is 0 less than or equal to negative 4? Mm, no, 0 is not less than or equal to negative 4. So this is the wrong side. i got to shade down here. Any of these ordered pairs down here would make this inequality true. Okay? Wrapping up, let's solve a real life problem. We can use um, problems that have inequalities. We can use graphs to solve these. You can spend at most $10 on grapes and apples for a fruit salad. Grapes cost $2.50 a pound and apples cost a buck a pound. Write and graph an inequality that represents the amount of grapes and apples you can buy, identify and interpret the two solutions. So here's the first thing. I can spend at most 10 pounds, so that's why I have that. Grapes cost 250 a pound and apples cost a buck. So if I take my grapes plus my apples, I cannot spend more than $10. Now, my grapes, they cost $2.50 per pound, but I don't know how many I'm buying. So that's where I'm getting 2.5x plus apples, a dollar a pound, 1y is less than or equal 10. There's my inequality. Now, you notice in the book, they rewrote that in slope-intercept form. If you take away 2.5x from each side, you now have slope-intercept form. Now, one thing I'm going to quickly do, negative 2.5 is the fraction negative 5 halves. I think it's going to be easier to graph this with the fraction. Okay, there's your y-intercept, 10. Your slope, down 5 over 2. So watch my pencil here, down 5 over 2, down 5 over 2. Okay, let's label our graph. The title, we'll call it fruit salad. The pounds of apples are the y-axis. The pounds of grapes are the x-axis. I'll take my ruler out. Let me see. Do I want a bold line or a dotted line? Well, according to this, I need a bold line. So you notice they took the ruler and they drew it right where my pen's at here. They're drawing a bold line. Okay, now, identify.
identify and interpret two solutions of the inequality. Now, you notice there's shading. Let's we got to test the point actually first. Let's test the point zero zero. If I put zero in here and zero in here, I get a true statement. So I should be shading below, which you see in the book they shaded below here. Okay. Now we're only using first quadrant because we can't have negative pounds of grapes and negative pounds of apples. So let's answer the question now. Identify and interpret two solutions. For, I'm going I'm to pick something different than the book. Just There's infinitely many right answers. Let's look here. You see how the point 1, 1 is part of this? That means I could buy one pound of grapes and one pound of apples and I'd be spending less than $10. Here's another answer. What about 3, 2? I could buy 3 pounds of grapes and 2 pounds of apples, and I'd spend less than or equal to $10. Any ordered pair on this bold line or in the shaded region would make this true. I'm going to pause the video here. If you have questions, make sure you ask in class.